Hi, beautiful Sagittarians. Welcome to your May 2020 horoscope. And Sag, this month, not only do we have 40% of our planets heading into a retrograde flow, which means things are going to slow down. It's time to do some review, but this is also a heavy, heavy month for you working on relationships. The energy of Gemini, which is just your opposite in your polarities, is going to be lit up. So there is relationship work going on. But really, I have to tell you, a lot of the relationship work I think that is going on is about you vibing with relationships. I don't think it's necessarily that everything has to change or has to fall apart. I feel like this month it's like welcome it in. I don't know Sagittarius if you're able to really vibe and bring and express and accept your own worth and your own value without really relationshiping, right? It almost acts as that mirror. It's like you give it away. You give away this information. You give away value. You give away truths to people and they give it back to you. That's how you kind of know. So I I feel like it's a very mirror month for you but either way it is still a month where you are going to reevaluate and evaluate these relationships for sure so let's jump in and talk about what's happening this month right at the beginning of the month we have got a full moon happening in the energy of scorpio now this is going to light up your 12th house space so all the things that are hidden your spiritual practices uh, maybe things you didn't want to look at or you haven't been addressing full on meditation it's um it's a really nice time, I think, with a full moon, too, to see if you need some retreat time, right? Like, do you need to retreat? Do you need to spend some solitude time in order to just kind of reground? The other thing I want to tell you about this 12th house space is this. Even though the full moon here is useful and it's going to say something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted, right? Pluto, who is the ruling energy of your 12th house in the general, is also in retrograde. It went retrograde in April. So as we consider the retrograde energy on top of this full moon energy here, as your spiritual practice has been developed and as you're trusting your intuition and you're going out in the world and making decisions and things like that, I want to tell you, double check confirm your intuition if you see a vision if you're having lots of visioning because that can happen with a full moon double check and confirm what you're hearing because pluto retrograde can actually make it a little bit kind of wonky it's a little bit what you're hearing what you think is exactly true if you can confirm it then you're good to go but if not you may not be hearing everything that you need to and so you've only got a piece of the message so at this full moon consider that what are your desires here? Scorpio wants to take you deep into your desires. What are the desires that you have here in your 12th house? The house of creativity, the house of spirituality, the house of transition, the house of fantasy. What are your desires here? And what are you power struggling with, right? Do you feel like there's something that you've got you that's got a hold on you? right? And here you're looking for a way to kind of escape that or not escape, but even let it go. Is there this space where you feel like you can't really express your creativity? Also, I think too, in the 12th house space here, is, a, is this a place where in relationships, you're wanting to be more vulnerable and you're wanting to connect, but maybe you're feeling a little bit stuck with that. So look at that particular energy and let that full moon guide you to the new path, okay? On the 11th, it is a busy day. We've got Mercury moving into the energy of Gemini where he's comfortable, but it's across the street from you. So this is your opposite energy. And we've also got Saturn heading into retrograde between Aquarius and Capricorn energies. So Mercury moving into the energy of Gemini, lighting up this seventh house space. This means you're gonna be communicating talking to lots of people. It is a social month. And even if you are still in your house, you're quarantining, whatever it is, this is an energy that can make you social. It can make you want to communicate. It can also make you want to study or to teach or to just share information in some way, shape or form. Maybe you're even listening online and you're gathering the information, but it is a wonderfully, wonderfully social energy. And this brings all the communication in. For some of you, um, I'm getting this vibe that definitely during the Saturn retrograde, this Mercury in the seventh house may have you taking like a short trip. Maybe you're going to see a friend or you're connecting with a friend and we've got Zoom and all of these other platforms now, but there's something about taking a trip, Sag, which you're real into, right? So you could be taking a trip someplace during the month of May that is also giving you a different perception and allowing you to really truly communicate, okay? Now during that Saturn retrograde, Saturn is going to begin its retrograde here at one degree of Aquarius, which is going to be in the third house, the communication house in the first place, right? And then he's going to back all the way up to 25 degrees of Capricorn and finish the retrograde in September. So 
as we see him move from this third house, you've had some new communications, new thinking. Literally, I feel like your brain has been raised, right? Like it doesn't matter if you're 60 or you're 16, like you've had this mental shift or this mental change that Saturn has indicated to you that, hey, we need some innovative thinking here. So you've just been becoming shown that. And now as he retrogrades back into the energy of Capricorn, this is going to be about finances. You're going back over finances. You're going back over things of value. You're going back over your physical possessions, how you do things and use your talents to make money as well. Because Saturn acts as your finance planet in the general, right? I will tell you that his retrograde is also going to ask you to be very serious about what's going on with your money or how you make your money or even your possessions. So be mindful that he's asking you to go back over this area, but it's nothing new. You've been looking at it for two and a half, three years. Okay, so you you have begun to crystallize these lessons. He just wants to make sure that you've made them nice and solid so that you can build a future with those things. I also keep coming back to relationships with you. What's the value of the relationships that you have um, in your life right now? Venus is going to go retrograde on the 13th, also in your seventh house. So truly, do you have the depth of value of relationships in your life? So we'll look at that. So speaking of the 13th, Mars is going to move into the energy of Pisces. This will light up your fourth house space, the foundational space. But we'll also see Venus begin that retrograde at 21 degrees of Gemini. And she will eat, leave it at five degrees of Gemini. And this will be in the seventh house. Now that Mars and Pisces kind of energy is going to be, I will tell you, Mars anywhere near the fourth house, even in the non-confrontational energy of Pisces, I think can make your family members or your household a little spicy sometimes, right? Mars is still Mars. So maybe it's even like passive aggressive spiciness. People are not directly dealing with things, right? Because Pisces doesn't always like to confront things head on. But I also feel like Mars here because he's action and he's motivation and he's desire. A good thing that you could be addressing head on in this fourth house space is truly if you needed to continue on or finish a renovation or you needed to make some housing repairs or something like that. Mars likes getting that physical action into what he's doing. So that'll be totally useful for you. But other than that, you can know fourth house, home, family, real estate, property, um, ancestors, your own psychological foundation. You will be in motion to work on this particular area. And this could, could include the things that, how are you spending your time in your house, right? Like, are you using your time and your energy to get house projects done so that you can have a secure space? This could definitely be something we, we see happening from there. Oh, some of you, okay, some of you may be working on a charity project from home or a project for a charity, but you're doing it from home. So if that's you, let me know in the comment section down below, okay? All right, also during Venus retrograde happening on the 13th, because this is in the Gemini energy, Venus retrograde is about looking over the things that have value. We're gonna look over our relationships. We're gonna look over our finances. We're gonna look over our possessions, but you're also gonna look over um, getting your needs met, right? Are you, do you have the level of affection and support and encouragement that you need in your life? In your relationships, these are gonna be big questions. If you are in a one-sided relationship, you are doing all the work, you are doing all of the hustle, you're doing all of the whatever. During a Venus retrograde, you may look around and say, I don't, I don't think that I'd like to do that. And or maybe you will speak with your partner, whether it be a business partner or a romantic partner and say, I, I need some shift to be happening here because you cannot take on responsibility for the whole thing. You only have a part in any situation. You don't have the whole thing, right? The other thing um, I think it will bring your attention to is what kind of romantic and, and financial situations do you like to be on be in? And that's very personal to you. Not everybody wants to get married. Not everybody wants to have just one partner, right? Not everybody wants this, that, or the third. This is going to ask you about your love style, about your financial style. What do you value in these areas of relationships? And this is a time for you to be honest about what that looks like for you so that you can ultimately go forward and have that in your life. The last thing I'm thinking of here too is that for some of you um, related to work or related to your finances in some way, you need a mentor. You need like a teacher in some way, shape or form. So you're the student in this case. 
And if you don't have that serious relationship, this Venus retrograde could be showing you that, that maybe you need some mentorship or you need to learn something at a more valuable level, okay? On the 14th, Jupiter is going to take its retrograde. Jupiter being your ruling energy will definitely have a pull on you over the next five months. Now, Jupiter is going to begin this retrograde at 27 degrees of Capricorn, and he's going to come out at 18 degrees of Capricorn. Now, as Jupiter retrogrades, he's going to retrograde here in your financial house or your value house. So truly, what Jupiter is saying is, hey, we need to do a solid, honest, right, the truth, Jupiter, assessment of our financial life, of our value life, of how we're making money. What are we doing with our money? Do we need all of these damn possessions, right? Um, so you're going to be put in a position to answer those questions until September 13th. What is the truth about this area of your life? Because wisdom comes from asking for help. Wisdom comes from letting that teacher come in and having the experience of having an area be a little bit off balance or maybe too extravagant, and then you bring it back down to size, right? Because with Jupiter energy, we tend to be overconfident in this particular area of our life where we're overindulgent in some way, shape, or form. And Jupiter's like, let me bring wisdom to this situation by showing you how to do it. So an honest evaluation of your strengths and your weaknesses in the second house of your life will be absolutely on the table so you can build a solid and effective structure that you can move forward on, okay? As we get to the 20th of the month, we see the sun coming into the energy of Capricorn. And on the 22nd, we welcome a new moon as a birthday present to our Gemini friends in that energy of Gemini. I think, did I say a new moon in Capricorn? It's a new moon in Gemini. So we welcome that new moon to plant these seeds of intention to begin something fresh here, whether it's a fresh perspective, Gemini, it's a fresh conversation, it's a fresh contract, it's a fresh negotiation, it's any of those kinds of things. We're looking for a fresh start to be able to have here in your relationship zone. So you get a breath of fresh air over this next four weeks really pushed into this area of your life. And it's this place where you get to do some things different. What are the changes that you feel like would make this area of your life successful or bring it into some kind of balance that you would like to see and experience in your world, okay? Now, as we end this month, the 28th, 29th, depending on where you live, Mercury will move into the energy of Cancer. Now, this is going to light up your 8th house space, so over here across the way. Mercury in Cancer has a fair amount of emotion attached to how it makes decisions and how it communicates. So in your 8th house, this is a house of shared resources. Venus is also retrograde, so very relational as well. Gemini is lit up this month, so you see it's a very relational um, month for you, so I think as you're communicating, as you're making decisions, as you are really truly as you're making decisions about any joint resource, do you take the buyout loan? Do you have to pay that back? Do you study astrology here? Do you enter a relationship over here? What's the health of this relationship? Is it, you know, how's it going in therapy? Any of these eighth house kinds of things that lead to transformation through the melding and the vulnerability and the intimacy of connecting with another source. I think that your emotions are really a strong kind of guide to tell you you which direction to go. I don't think it's best to make emotional decisions, but as your emotions are speaking to you, you get the opportunity to have some clear acknowledgement here, right? And Mercury is like, oh, wait, we're really upset about this, but are we upset or are we afraid? We're really over here about this. Oh, no, wait, we're actually really excited about that. So Mercury here kind of helps to sort out what the emotional conversation is and improves its efficiency so that you can use it to make strong decisions for yourself. It's always interesting to see where the emotional valence lies in any decision that we make anyways, because if you look back at every decision in your life, there was some emotion behind it when you made the decision. So interesting, psychological, whole nother video, whole nother channel. So, all right. I think it's going to be a beautiful month, Sagittarians. I hope you will continue to join me on this channel with the collaborations, which I've decided to name them Eat and Greets because we're going to have a little snack, invite an astrologer over, and we're going to talk astrology. Now, all of them are not going to be just topics. We have some sessions coming up where we're actually teaching you technical astrological techniques as well, so you can invite those into your own, pra into your own practice. So I hope to see you. Let's see. We have had Nadia Shah, Brian Coulter, Sasha Benedetti, um, Shireen Vishmaya has been here. 
On the way, we've got Patrick Arundel, Heather Eland is coming up, Gemini Brett will be over here, Maurice Fernandez. We're trying to get Kaipacha, so Kaipacha, I'm calling you. So we will have a whole bunch of people coming over, and I look forward to sharing some time with you and with them. All right, Saj, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'm sending you all my love, and I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye.